think there might be something in the water. Never mind, just lasers. Hi, I'm Ben, welcome to When the Apple Drops. As internet service providers are slowly rolling out optical fibre networks, I thought it might be interesting to go into a little bit about how an optical fibre actually works. The basic job description of an optical fibre is to have information encoded in light, and then to put that light in a tube, and then to give the other end of that tube to your friend. Sort of like the cup on a string telephone that I'm pretty sure T-Mobile still uses in their network. An optical fibre is made from a glass core wrapped in a plastic coating which has a slightly lower index of refraction than the glass inside. The refractive index just describes how quickly light can move through a substance, and light will stay inside the inner core because of something called total internal reflection, which is when light tries to move from a high refractive index to a low refractive index under certain angles. It basically doesn't make it, it just bounces off the sidewalk. So if you can imagine the light enters the optical fibre, and sort of bounces its way off the sidewalls all the way down and then comes out of the end. Here, for example, is an optical fibre I use in my lab to save space. Or rather, to cover up the fact that I didn't plan ahead and I don't have enough space for all my optical components. Crap. Going back to the clip I showed at the beginning, here's what's really going on. So what I was doing was coupling a laser into the stream coming out from the coat bottle. The refractive index for water is 1.33, and the refractive index for air is 1. So the water stream in air sort of acts like an optical fibre and guides the wave along until it hits my hand. So what I'm saying is, if climate change does cause global flooding, we'll still have the internet. If you like this sort of thing, then maybe subscribe and I'll do a few more. Bye.